What's up guys, Rooster Mods. Today I wanted to make a tutorial for you. I wanted to make a tutorial about something that nobody ever really taught me or is kind of hard to find information on. And I wanted to make this tutorial on how to make normals the way that Giants wants you to. Giants has their own particular way of making normal maps for their objects that makes them look a certain way. And they've started enforcing that mods on the mod hub have this normal map texture. And it took me a bit to kind of figure out exactly how to make that. And I found multiple methods and ways to do so. And today I wanted to share three different ways to make these normal maps. I'm gonna go from the simplest, but not the best to maybe the easiest and the best. The last two you could kind of debate, but I wanna show you three different ways to kind of do it. So let's get into it. All right, so this first method isn't necessarily something I'd recommend, but technically you can kind of do it and get away with it in a pinch. So I thought I'd share it anyway. What we're going to need to do is you're going to need to make sure your object is completely unwrapped. Once you've got it all unwrapped, you've got your UV map set, you're good to go. Next, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to go to UV, and you're going to have to go to Export UV Layout. So once you've got that, you're going to have to um, make sure your fill opacity is at 1, and I like to export in 4K. Okay. Once you've got that figured out, you're going to bring your image to GIMP. This is what it looks like when you export your UV layout like I described. What we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to come up to... Um, it's a layer transparency and we're going to have to go alpha to selection what that's going to do is it's going to select all of uh all of the alpha or actually not all the alpha as you'll see because what we're going to do next is we're going to press Control x that's going to cut out all the uvs and then we're going to go to black we're going to go to our bucket fill tool and we're going to fill in all these selected areas that we cut out Next, we're going to press Control i to invert our selection. And we're going to go to white, and we're going to fill in the rest. Once we clear our selection over here, just kind of unselect that, you'll see that now we have an image where our UV map is black, and what was the background of our UV map is now white. What we can do now is we can go to filters, and we can go to generic, and then we can go to normal. And you'll see it spits out a normal map. It basically just took the contrast that we had in the last image, which was just black and white, and then it created normal maps around it. Um, what we can do now is we can set our scale to 0.75. I think that's a good number for Farming Simulator. And if your bumps are coming out as holes and your holes are coming out as bumps, what you can do is flip the X. Kind of complicated, but it's basically based on is the game running on DirectX or is it running on OpenGL? Kind of they, the two different texture translation methods kind of inverted UV maps compared to each other. But if you have a problem like that, you can always just flip X and that will fix your problem. The one thing you'll notice is that this is going to create normal lines around all of the edges. So if you have a UV cutout where you don't actually want an edge, you're going to have to go in there and you're going to have to actually kind of delete that by sampling that color and then kind of wiping it out. So this is a method that's not going to create accurate normal maps by any stretch of the imagination. They're going to be in one uniform direction. And if your object isn't all unwrapped the same way, then your normal map's going to kind of be pointing in different directions. But if you don't look too closely, it kind of works. I've seen modders get away with this, so... Not the best method, but I at least wanted to share this as one option. All right, so this next method I'm going to show you is arguably the most powerful, but also the most complicated. So let's get into it. The first thing you're going to need to do is make sure you have your object here, make sure you have it all unwrapped, make sure that you're in the shading tab, just like we had it unwrapped before. So we're going to come here and we're going to go to shading and we're going to click new here to make a new material. This is going to give you your principal BSDF node and your material output node. Um, we're going to come here. We're going to be generated this material. Let's call this test material just for clarity. 
We're going to come to all the other objects that we want this texture to be applied to, like this guy. And we're going to come down here. We're going to give this test material too. So now we're changing it all at once. Um, but we're going to select everything. Oh, I don't need to select everything. We're going to come down here. And we're going to click Add. And we're going to go to Texture. And we're going to add an image texture. Then we're going to go to Add. And we're going to add the bevel node. This bevel node down here. You're going to take this purple dot and you're going to drag this normal onto this normal of the material. So this bevel is now going to apply to this material. Next, you're going to come down over here to your UV map area and we're going to go to new and we're going to make a new image called test. Uncheck alpha if you have that checked, um, whatever size you want and click OK. Bigger is probably better. You can always shrink it later, but it's hard to upscale. We're going to go down to image texture here. And we're going to come here to all of our images in our file. And we're going to come to test. And we're going to apply test to this guy. Next, we're going to come over here. We're going to come to our render tab. We're going to make sure we change from EV to cycles. Make sure that is on cycles. Very important. And then you're going to come down to the bake tab. So this bake tab here, um, we're going to, instead of our bake type being combined, we're just going to do a normal bake. Um, tangent XYZ is all fine. We have image textures here. We clear the image. And then our margin is how much extra cushion it adds to the edge of where we bake the textures. Um, we can leave that at four pixels. That's fine. And then I believe if we've done everything correctly, we can come here and we can click bake. You can see it'll run it down here and oh, okay. You can see it spat out a bevel bake down here. Um, it looks kind of grainy. What can we do to fix that? Well, this bevels right now is only doing four samples. So we can do 16, which is our maximum. And then this radius down here is kind of high too. So you see the rest of the bake came in there. If you select everything and click bake, it'll bake it all onto the same image. So you can see this is kind of rough, kind of grainy, not really the best kind of doing weird stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn our samples up to 16 and we're going to change our radius. I think a radius of 0 0.003 to about 0 0.01 is probably about as high as you really want to go. 0 0.003 to 0 0.007 is kind of the sweet spot I've heard. You have to play with this. So this is obviously very high at 0 0.05. So we're going to change this to 0 0.005. And then make sure we have all this selected. We have this image. We're going to click bake again. You can see it's going to run down here. It's going to bake this texture. That's our first round. And then it's going to run through the second round. This is a more complicated geometry, this inner rim. So it's going to take a little bit more to generate that. But once we've got that generated, we'll be able to come over to this image here. And you pay attention. We kind of get it done. Your computer's probably going to, probably going to ramp up while you're doing this. Ah, so you see here. Okay, this see, this is a much better normal map. You can see that we've got our bolts here you can actually see they're kind of well defined you can see our, our edges are much cleaner and this is definitely an image that we could kind of start with obviously you need to go ahead and play with the settings yourself i'd recommend baking it really high resolutions and then scaling it down and you might have to tweak some of your settings but if you follow this and you kind of put this together this is a great way to create normal maps that are acceptable by giants all right so now i'm going to show you this third method. And this third method is probably my favorite because it kind of takes the second method that I showed you with the node and kind of does it, but does it easier and kind of gives you some more options. So what we're going to do here for this one is we're going to make sure that we have the text tools add-on installed. This is a free plugin for Blender. It's called text tools. I highly recommend you go get it and install it. It has a lot of great options for you. And we're going to be using this guy. So make sure you have your object here, just like we did before. Make sure you have it all selected and we'll open up our UV map here. So we have our UV map made. You're gonna to come to the text tools add-on. You can open this menu by pressing N and you can come over. It's the same place this old Giants i3D exporter kind of tool is. But anyway, here's text tools. Uh, we could bake at whatever resolution we want. We can come up to 1024. We can change our padding like we did with the second method. But what we're really interested in here is the baking. So we're gonna come down to this baking tab and you can see there are all sorts of options. What we want to do here is we essentially want to come down to tangent bevel. This is, in essence, a sort of shortcut to use the bevel node. 
It's gonna make our life easier and it kind of gives us the same options. So you're gonna see here the same way before, we could go up to 16 bevel samples and we can come in here and we could type 0 0.005. Um, it's gonna show zero, but it remembers it. You can see there it says 0 0.005. We could type 0 0.01. We could type 0 0.001. We can change our radius of the bevel to be whatever we want it to be. So we'll go back to 0 0.005 here. Um, one thing we're gonna wanna do is we're going to want to click, um, we're gonna make sure that we want all of these to be on the same texture. So right now you'll see here is it's baking 2x, it's baking selected objects. We wanna make sure that all of our objects are on the same texture. So what we're gonna do here, we're going to come down here and you can see where it says force normal, we're going to go to force single. That's going to force all of these objects to bake onto the same texture. There's other options you can play with here too. Um, you can play with your anti-aliasing, your color space. I wouldn't recommend messing with color space unless you go with sRGB, but you could do anti-aliasing if you want to. There's all sorts of other things, but essentially once we've got all this set up and we've got our text tools add on gone, we can just go ahead and press bake. It'll go ahead and run through and boom, it spits out a bake for us. It's just like doing the node method um, it doesn't give you quite as much fine control if you really know your, your blender nodes. You can do all sorts of cool stuff. But this is just a really fast way to kind of get that bevel node. And it can give you some, some pretty nice results. Not to mention that the text tools add-on is nice to have anyway because it has all sorts of nice UV layout options, cropping and moving things around and centralizing, straightening, rectifying. Um, we can even go ahead and I believe there is a way to preview this texture. So if you come here, we can go ahead and we can press the preview and it'll actually apply this texture to this object and we can kind of get an idea of what it might look like. It's not super easy to see, but it kind of might give you an idea. So yeah, um, the text tools add-on is the third method I recommend for kind of making these normals. Let's go ahead and let's go into GE and let's see kind of what our results look like and what we could do to maybe fix anything we didn't like. So here we are in GE, we've got our rim imported, we've got it all UDIM'd, UDIM'd, and all ready to go, and we wanna make it look nice. We need that normal map. Okay, so we're gonna come in here and we're gonna show you the results of our labor and kind of what this stuff ended up looking like. So first, let's do the UV, um, the UV normal map Photoshop method that I kind of showed you in the beginning. So you can obviously see there are some clear problems here. These aren't great seams, but it's just kind of showing you what, what issues you might run into. Where you can see wherever there was an edge seam, wherever a UV map split, it's going to throw a, a, a normal bevel on the edge there. So you can see where this seam is for this rim and where there are different seams across the object, it clearly doesn't look correct and that's something you would have to correct manually. And that's not really, that's why I don't really recommend that method. If we come to the normal map made with the node method, the uh, shading you can see that this instantly is starting to look a lot better and look kind of closer to like something giants would make um you can see there's a little bit of dirtiness around the edges and we'll get to that but this does look a lot better you can really kind of see where it makes a difference and especially if i come down here and you see me take it away you'll instantly recognize some of the differences and some of the ways that things look different so next let's come to the one we made with text tools. Let's go to the text tools DDS. And you can see it looks very similar. It is practically the same method after all. Um, you'll see, again, these edges don't look right. We'll get to that later. But yeah, you can see this looks pretty much the same as the node. It's a similar result. I did do an additional bake with 4K where I baked it at 4K and then I scaled it down. And you can see the edges are a little cleaner. It's not as it's not as bad down here. Still some problems up there. But overall, baking at 4K, baking at a higher resolution, and then shrinking that texture down kind of allows us to compress some of that detail. So now we'll talk about like some of these issues here. This issue up here is a result of the unwrap not quite being stretched out enough, not being able to capture all that detail. There's a lot of faces up here that kind of wrap up and around the rim and they're kind of small and hard to get a hold of. And so this is a case where you might have to go take it into something like paint.net or GIMP and kind of Photoshop, kind of clean it up manually. And that's kind of what I've done here. If we come over here and we come to 
Um, let's see, text 4K cleaned. I kind of cleaned up this image here. I kind of just tidied up some of those edges there. And if we select this guy, you'll see, boom, all those problems sort of go away. And this looks exactly like something that I'd kind of like to, uh, kind of like to put out. So just kind of going through and showing you what we did and then what are the results we did. So you can kind of learn from it and you can take this from there. So yeah, that's kind of the end of this normals tutorial. I wanna thank everybody for watching. I really, really hope this helped some people. I know for me, this was something that nobody really had like available information on. All the tutorials I looked up were general, you know, like Blender normal, which is great, but I'm not baking normals onto objects. I'm just trying to do beveled edges. I really hope this helps some people. If you liked this kind of information, please let me know and I'd be happy to make more tutorials in the future for you. Um, but in the meantime, keep on modding, keep on farming, guys, and I'll catch you later. If you want to get exclusive updates and videos, get help with your own mods, help me decide what I make, or just allow me to continue modding and making content for you, head over to patreon.com roostermods to learn more about how you can support me. Thank you.